Welcome to another mini video from 2dgamartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to quickly create a t-shirt mock-up. I know that there are a lot of templates out there, but sometimes they just don't really match what you need, especially not in Affinity Designer. I'm creating a layered design where the highlights and shadows are laid on top of your design, even though it is plain 2D and there is no 3D deformation, it looks convincing enough and is easy to edit. I create the base shape from a rectangle and a circle to cut out the neckline and two more rectangles for the arms. Seeing I want a clipping mask, a compound won't work here, so I use the boolean add to attach the arms and the boolean subtract to cut the neckline. Now I have one curve that will hold the content. I adjust the nodes slightly and then add a shape for the inside. The back of a t-shirt is not cut as low as the neckline. I add details inside, which are the seams of the neck and the arms. I move these lines inside the shirt, so they act as child objects inside a clipping mask. I set the stroke to black and adjust the opacity and set it to multiply. The advantage of working with just black and white is no matter how I change the background color, those effects will always work. Working with a green line here might look good on the green shirt, but might not work when I change the shirt color to pink. So working with plain black for my details and plain black and white for the folds makes it a lot easier to change and use the mock-up for other designs and colors. With the base shape done, it's time to add the folds. In order to have a more neutral background, I change the t-shirt to a gray and start with a straight line that I slightly curve and then adjust the stroke and the pressure curve of that line. I want it to be slightly thicker and taper towards the top. I add a Gaussian blur to this line to soften it. I set it to multiply to mix with the colors below and group it in a separate group so all my shadow lines are in one group, the highlights will be in a different group. That makes it easier to adjust later on. I use the one line as the base and duplicate it a few times to create the shadows for the folds. By adjusting the pressure curve, I can make the fold appear to fade slightly at both ends. By using the transparency tool, I can control the fading of the other lines as well. I use the node tool to add additional lines at the bottom of my shirt. To adjust the line to the folds I just created.
to create the highlights I just duplicate the shadows rename the group and adjust the color set it to white instead of the black and the multiply is turned to add or in this case to screen moved over slightly the highlights match the shadows whenever you have a shadow you also have a matching highlight I add some highlights at the top and then go in and soften my highlights with the transparency tool add some light to the neckline and have my base template ready to add a little bit more depth I add a shadow shape behind the shirt for the inside as well as a drop shadow for the whole shirt to make it stand out from the background a little bit better I fade some more highlights with the transparency tool and realized that I had not saved the design so if you work on something semi-complex remember to save and save often I bring in one of the designs I did earlier for a tutorial on the shape builder tool I place it inside the clipping mask below the highlights and details change the color and adjust the highlights and details to match for darker colors you want more shadow color and less highlight and with lighter colors it's vice versa once in there it's easy to change I hide the first design and place another design inside adjust the colors to match the gradient in this case goes from a deep blue to the color at the bottom of my design and if that's not good enough and shows a line a little bit of a fade won't hurt with the shoulders I can add a separate shape which if you have a design printed on the shoulders makes sense to add shapes specifically for those designs and use those shapes as clipping masks inside a clipping mask I just use a gradient fill for this design and duplicate it over to the other side the folds still work because they are placed on top of my design I can make them stronger I can add more wrinkles to the design if I want to do so I can curve the whole t-shirt a little bit more widen it for an XX size it's easy to edit and that's where the advantage of creating your own template lies you can edit everything if you're unsure about the placement of the folds have a look at reference images and copy what you see in those if you want to take it to the next level add a warp group mesh if you enjoyed this video and learned something new please subscribe to my channel click on the notification icon leave a like and I will see you again soon.